Hello. We are here for our dynamics course. We are going to learn chapter one today, particle kinematics. So dynamics, some introduction, engineering mechanics is classified into two parts. One is your statics 2301 and another is dynamics. Statics concerned with equilibrium of a body that is either at rest or moves with constant velocity. That's your static course. And dynamics, this course deals with the accelerated motion of the body. So that's your engineering mechanics classified into two parts. Further, dynamics is classified into two parts, kinematics and kinetics. Here, kinematics, we treat only geometric aspects of the motion. You have any particle or any body that is moving. In kinematics, we try to understand its position, displacement, velocity and acceleration with respect to time. We are not worried about why motion is happening. We are not worried about forces exerted on a particle, on a body. That's your kinematics or particle kinematics in this sense. Then later in chapter 13, we will learn about kinetics. Kinetics where we learn why motion happens. We try to understand forces and effects on this motion. So that's your dynamics. Chapter 12, we are going to start with particle kinematics and then try to understand particle position, displacement, velocity and acceleration with respect to time. So in this chapter, chapter 12, particle kinematics, we are going to learn, uh, we are going to introduce the concepts of position, displacement, velocity and acceleration. Then we are going to study the particle motion along a straight line, something known as a rectilinear motion. Then we are going to learn the particles motion on a curved path known as curvilinear motion. And then we are going to see dependent motion of two particles, two particles, how they are, if there is the motion is related, how it affects each other. And then we are going to learn more about relative motion between two particles. So these are the things that we are going to cover in this chapter, particle kinematics. So let's start with the rectilinear kinematics. Rectilinear as we have this linear here, what is mean by rectilinear kinematics? It means that kinematics of a particle which is moving in a straight line. If I have a particle, it is moving in a straight line and then I'm trying to understand the position displacement velocity of that particle. In that case, I'm still learning rectilinear kinematics. Later, we will see something known as curvilinear kinematics in which particle travels a curve motion. So here in rectilinear kinematics, we try to understand particle the motion of a particle along a straight line. So let's say I have a particle here, <coughs> it's going to go follow a straight line path. However, to understand its position and velocity acceleration, I need to fix a coordinate system. I need to have some reference point to understand its position, velocity and acceleration. So I'm going to take a coordinate. Uh, let's say this is my origin. And from this point, I'm going to try to understand this position, velocity and acceleration of this particle. So here I'm going to have this origin and then it is at distance s so i'm going to use letter s s stands for the position or total distance between origin and the particle so that's my position of the particle the particle is not moving it's just a position s could be 5 meters 10 meters 20 meters it could be anything so that's my position given by the letter s now let's see the particle moves it moves from one position to another so it moves from s to s bar so this is a new position of a particle that is s bar and total displacement is delta s so that's your change in displacement s bar minus s is given as change in position that's total displacement of a particle of course the particle is moving in some amount of time it's not going to uh, disappear here and appear here that's not going to happen so it's going to move from this point to this point it's going to take some time one second two second ten seconds some time and that tells us something about velocity velocity is nothing but distance upon time total distance traveled by time and that's how you can get something known as average velocity total average velocity at this point and this point is delta s by delta t so let's say particles traveling five meter distance in one second so that's your average velocity is 5 meter per second. So that's your average velocity. However, in this type of calculation, I'm more interested in instantaneous velocity. Instantaneous velocity means the velocity at any instant, at this point, at this point, at this point, at this point. 
This one I'll get average velocity, instantaneous velocity, velocity in between if I want to know that. It means that as time goes to zero, infinitesimally small time, as time goes to zero, zero, closer to zero, in that case I'm going to apply this limit at delta t tends to zero, I'll get velocity as ds by dt and that's the form that we are going to use for the calculation. V is equal to distance upon time or ds by dt and that's my velocity of this particle. Then acceleration, so let's assume that this particle is increasing in speed. So initially it has 5 meter per second velocity, now the speed has increased to 10 meter per second. So that's called acceleration, it's change in speed or increase in speed. If it is a decrease in speed, we call it deceleration. So change in speed, average acceleration here, delta v by delta t. So delta v is change in, acceleration, change in velocity in per unit time, whatever the time required for the change delta v by delta t. I'm going to apply limit. I want to know acceleration at in between, somewhere in between, whatever, at this point, at this point. In that case, I'm going to apply limit as delta t goes to zero. I'll get acceleration as a is equal to dv by dt. And that's what we are going to use for to calculate acceleration. So a, or you can rewrite it as double derivative of your position, a d square s by dt square, or single derivative of velocity a dv by dt. This is very important. This is very simple. This is very important for, for us to understand a is equal to dv by dt. Deceleration, if for some reason particle velocity is slowing down, in that case this change in velocity will be negative, in that case we call it as a deceleration or negative acceleration, slowing down. If velocity is constant, then acceleration is zero. So derivative of constant is zero. So if velocity is constant, there is no change in speed, acceleration is zero. The unit that we use for acceleration is generally meter per second square or if it is foot pound system then feet per second square. So that's the unit that we use for acceleration. For example, gravitational acceleration 9.81 meter per second square downwards or in feet per second square is 32.2 feet per second square. So we learn velocity, distance upon time ds by dt, acceleration dv by dt change in velocity per unit time, so dv by dt, that's my acceleration. Now if you look at these two equations, what we see is that this dt and this dt is common here. I have dt, I have dt, it means that I can correlate these two equations based on this change in time. And if I can do that, what I will do is that dt is equal to ds by v or is equal to dv by a. And then I can equate these parts and then I can simply say a ds is equal to v dv. It means acceleration into change in distance is equal to velocity into change in velocity. So ADS is equal to VDV. That's the expression I get when I combine these two expressions. So we have velocity ds by dt, acceleration dv by dt, and ADS is equal to VDV. These three sets we get. Now what we do, we need these equations to saw to have some workable form. So here, we are going to integrate this equation, we are going to work on these equations, and we are going to see what we can do with these equations. Can we use them in real life? That's, let's find out. So let's assume that the acceleration is constant. For example, gravitational acceleration is constant. So we learn here, this is the acceleration, a is equal to dv by dt. So let's take a special case. Let's assume that for some reason, the particle is moving, and the acceleration of that particle is constant like 9.81 meter square, gravitational acceleration. So let's say this apple is falling down, so it's falling down with constant acceleration. So if that's the case, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to say call it A is equal to ACC for constant. Now, AC is equal to dV by dt. I know that AC acceleration is dV by dt. I'm going to take that AC is equal to dV by dt and I'm going to integrate it. Let's see what happens. So. Let's say a particle is moving, it has some acceleration. I'm going to integrate this constant acceleration. Uh, I'm going to take this dt here, dv by dt at right hand side, and then I'm going to integrate it from initial velocity to final velocity of a particle. v0 to v is equal to ac dt, 0 to t, then time t 0 to t. I'm going to integrate that. It's a very simple integration, and if I do that integration, what I get is v minus v0, upper limit minus lower limit, lower limit, v minus v0 is equal to ac, this is a constant, I will come and take it out of the integration, 
and then I'll get 0 to t dt. It's very simple integration, it is it can become t minus 0. So here I'm going to have v, I'm going to take this v0 at right hand side and I'm going to write down the equation. It is says v is equal to v0 plus act. That's the very simple equation that I get. What does this equation mean? It says that at any given time, the final velocity of a particle, if it is moving with constant acceleration, final velocity of a particle is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration into time. It means with this equation, I can calculate a final velocity of particle at any given time. If time is equal to, if particle is going down, it's moving with constant acceleration, and I want to know its velocity at 3 second mark. All I do is that calculate, I uh, find out its initial velocity, let's say it is 0 because you are just dropping the object, let's assume that. Gravitational acceleration into time and then you can calculate its final velocity. It's a very simple expression but tells you about final velocity. This is final velocity, initial velocity plus constant acceleration into time. You use that and you can find out final velocity. So let's do a problem. In this problem what we have, you are going to drop an apple from this tower and then as this apple goes down with zero initial velocity so you are going to drop this apple with zero velocity so this v0 is zero gravitational acceleration you know 9.81 you know that our origin is here so gravitational acceleration 9.81 you know you are going to drop an apple and then I want to know its velocity at 3 second mark means is you are going to drop it at 0 second and 1 second, 2 second, 3 second the time will pass I want to know what is the velocity of the, the velocity of particle is going to or of apple is going to increase so at 0 mark it's 0 then 1 is going to increase because the acceleration is accelerating because of the gravity so at 3 second mark it will be somewhere here I want to know its exact velocity at that time it's very simple then what you do is that your final velocity at 3 second mark, V you have to calculate, V0 is 0, you put 9.81 there and 3 there, so 9.81 into 3, it will come around 29.43 second, 43 meter per second. So 9.81 into 3 will become 29.43 and that's your final velocity. So you are going to drop an apple and now you know exact velocity at 3 second mark of that apple is 29.4 meter per second. You can calculate it at 1 second mark, 1.5, 2 second mark. So at 1 second mark, it will be 9.81 into 1, it will be 9.81 meter per second. And keep remember the writing the unit in your exam. So 29.4 meter per second, that's the velocity, that's the final velocity of the apple at 3 second mark. You can calculate that by using this equation. It's very simple but very important. Then let's do another integration. Now we know v is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration into time. So I am going to take that v also I know ds by dt. Velocity is distance upon time, I know that. So I am going to take this two part, ds by dt is equal to v0 plus act. I am going to take these two things and I am going to integrate it. I am going to send this dt on the right hand side and I am going to integrate it for position for s. So it will look something like this s0 to s, how much distance is going to cover, s0 is initial distance, s is final distance, is equal to 0 to time and then this one v0 plus a c d dt. I am going to integrate it and this is again very simple integration and if you integrate that what you get is final distance minus initial distance is equal to 0 to t time v0 d dt plus this part 0 to t a c d dt. You again do solve this integration and finally you will get this very important equation. S is equal to S0 plus V0T plus 1 half ACT square. What does it mean? It means that S is the final distance covered by the particle or an apple. This S is initial distance, then initial velocity into time into constant acceleration into time square. It means with this expression I can calculate how much distance the particle can travel. The earlier expression that we did, we can calculate its final velocity. 
with this expression we can calculate its final distance in that given time if you know the velocity of course initial velocity so let's see if we can use this expression that we just derived you are going to drop an apple it's a similar problem you are going to drop an apple from this power now you are going to drop it again with zero initial velocity it means that this v0 is zero you are going to drop it with zero initial velocity what we want to know now is its position from the top at three seconds mark so you are going to drop it it's going to drop one second two second three second it's going to drop some 10 meters 20 30 40 meters in given time at three second mark i want to know where this this particle here from the top so my zero meter will start here one meter two meter ten twenty thirty forty fifty so between these fifty at three second mark where is exactly the particle from the top okay i want to know this final distance traveled by the particle this initial distance i'm going to consider zero because that's my origin at the top and i'm going downward so my origin at the top from down up from this point i'm going to measure the distance downward so s0 is 0 s i have to calculate v0 zero, 0 initial velocity so i'm going to put that initial velocity is 0 just dropping it is equal to 1.1 1 by 2 9.81 years gravitational acceleration into time square time is 3 second mark all you have to do is punch in the numbers 1 half 9.81 into 3 square and then you will get how much distance is going to cover and in this case if you do this calculation the answer you will get is 44.1 meters so and this is true if you go to this tower in around 50 meter height this is like it's 54 meter height so somewhere here 50 meter height and you actually drop that apple and you do actual this experiment you'll get almost the number 44.1 meter at three second mark this is actually happens neglecting air resistance so here s is equal to s0 plus this is very important ex expression s0 plus initial velocity into time plus one half act square you can calculate its final distance let's do it another way now you are going to drop an apple and you want to know how much time it's going to take to reach the ground so you calculated at three second mark where it is now you want to know total time to cover this 50 seconds where entire what is exact amount of time so you are going to still use this formula now your final distance is 50 so what you are going to do put 50 here final distance this is 0 this is 0 9.81 into t you have to calculate it for t you have to find out how much time it takes to cover all its 50 meters length downward direction so now 50 here numbers rest of the numbers and then find out time now if you can you can pause the video you can do this calculation and see how much time is going to take to come here at 50 meter mark if you want to pause you can i will continue with here the answer that you will get is 3.19 second so what happens you're going to drop an apple if you have a stopwatch you can measure it and then you can stop in the stopwatch when it reach here the stopwatch will say 3.19 or 3.2 seconds that's the answer that you will get and then this will actually happen if you go there if you draw it you'll get almost 3.19 seconds so now you have this formula because of this you don't have to go and do actual experiment you can actually on paper calculate how much time is going to require to come from this point to this point you can do that and that's the importance of this formula you can calculate final distance if you know final distance you can calculate time so that's very important expression or equation that you need to remember then let's see if we can get third equation we know <coughs> V D V is equal to A D S or A C D S. That's the third equation that we derived from these two equations from velocity and acceleration. Let's integrate these both expressions. V D V is equal to A C D S integration from the final initial velocity to final velocity, initial distance to final distance. And if we do that, if you solve this integration, it's very simple integration. If you solve that, you will get something like this. 
v square, that's final velocity square, is equal to initial velocity square plus 2 constant acceleration into change in distance s minus s0, final distance minus initial distance. Now this expression does not have time, it means for some reason in your problem time is not given, only distance and velocity you have, in that case you can use this expression to calculate either distance or velocity. So in this case you can calculate final velocity if you know just how much distance is going to cover. This is final distance, if you know initial distance, you can calculate its final velocity. So it's kind of a combination of first two equations, if you can have that, then you can eliminate t in first two equations and then you will get this expression. Final velocity square is equal to initial velocity square plus 2 acceleration into change in distance. Let's see if we can use these equation. What we have here is an apple dropped from the tower. Now, I want to know what is its velocity at halfway mark. Time is not given, 3 seconds, 2 seconds, time is not given here. We are going to drop it with zero velocity. At halfway mark, it means that when it will cover 25 meter distance, at that instant, I want to know velocity. It starts with 1, one meter, 10 meter, 20, 25 and it's going to continue, it's going to increase in velocity continue but at that instant when it reaches at 25 meter mark, I want to know at what velocity is it. If I freeze the time at 25 meter mark, what will be that velocity? I want to know that. So to calculate that velocity, so this is my final velocity, final means at 25 meter mark, so I am going to consider the journey from 0 to 25 only. So 0 is initial point, 25 is meter is final point. So I am going to put that 0 meter here, uh, velocity, final velocity here, I'm going to, I have to calculate that. Initial velocity 0 is here because it's 0 initial velocity, 2 constant acceleration s minus s 0. So here final distance is 25 because that is the final distance, s0 is 0, so we are going to start at 0, so all you have to do is 2 into 9.81 into 25, that is 25 minus 0 is 25, so 2, 9.81, 25, and if you do that, you will get its velocity, if you can solve it and you will take the square root of the answer, you will get the final answer as 22.1 meter, if you can do this, you can solve this problem by taking calculator. So, what does it mean? You start with zero velocity. When velocity increases at 10 meter mark, it will have some velocity. 20 meter mark, it will have some velocity, increased velocity. And at 25 meter mark, exactly if you freeze time, at that instant, halfway mark is going to have velocity of 22.1 meter. And that's it, 22.1 meter. So, these three expressions, very important expressions you get. You have velocity, you have distance and then you can calculate again velocity if you can combine these two equations for time, you will get the third equation. These equations I like to call it common sense equation. Now if you want to study for the exam, do one thing, take a printout of this slide and put it in your bedroom because you are going to need this expression again and again throughout this course. These are very important expressions. Do not ever forget these expressions. It's very simple but very important expressions. You can calculate any time, any velocity, any distance if you have constant acceleration of any object all together. You can do that on paper. You don't have to do experiment. So these are the important expressions. Make sure that you understand. Let's solve a problem from the book. So here in this problem what we have is a car is going to start at point O, its origin, and is going to travel in a straight line. Now, for this car, the velocity profile is given. V is equal to 3t square plus 2t. So, there is no number for velocity, but an equation for velocity. What does it mean? Is velocity is depend on time. So, if time is equal to, t is equal to 0, velocity was 0. 3t square plus 2t, 0, 0, 0. So at 0t, velocity was 0. Then at 1, t is equal to 1 second. You can put 1 here, 1 here. So that will become 3 into 1, 3 plus 2 into 1, 2. So total 5. 
So velocity will become 5 feet per second at 1 second mark. Then 2 second mark you can put t here then you can calculate velocity. So as it goes ahead the velocity is increasing with time and that's what this equation means. So velocity is increasing with time, v is equal to theta square plus 2t, that's the profile in feet per second. Velocity is given. What they want us to calculate, its position at 3 second mark. So it's going to go continue, I want to know how much distance is going to travel in 3 seconds. I have velocity, I want to find out how much distance is going to travel. Then. I want to find out acceleration at 3 second mark. I have velocity. I want to know what is its exact acceleration at 3 second mark. So, V is equal to ds by dt. I'm going to start with this part. V is equal to ds by dt. Acceleration A is equal to dv by dt. We are going to use this expression. So, first I want to know, I want to calculate the position, how far is going to go. So for that, I am going to find the derivative of this part and then I am going to put t is equal to 3 second. So derivative of this one is 3t squared 2t and it's very simple derivative, I am uh, going to find integration for this one. So here what is going to happen is that I want to go from s ds to s. If I want to go from ds to s, I am going to integrate it. So here v is equal to ds by dt, I am going to integrate it and then if I do that, if I do this simple integration, I will get something like this. s is equal to t cube plus t square. If I do that, t cube plus t square, I will get uh, I'm going to put t is equal to 3 second there and then I'll get the final position which is 36 feet. So 3 cube nine, uh, three cube is 27, 3 cube three squared is 9, 27 plus 9 is 36. So that's the feet. It means that this car is going to travel 36 feet distance altogether. That's the first part. The second part says find out an acceleration. For that I'm going to find the derivative. Now, to calculate acceleration, acceleration is nothing but dv by dt, I have a velocity, so I am going to find out derivative and then I will get a is equal to d, derivative of this expression 3t square plus 2t and if I do that, I will get 6t plus 2 and it is simple, t is equal to 3 second, put that there and then once you do that, you will get final acceleration number 20 feet per second, that is it. So, you had the expression, you wanted the position, you take integration, you can calculate the position, you do the derivative and then you should be able to find out the acceleration. This is a simple problem from the book. Practice it again and again, change the numbers, see what happens and then that's how you can do it. More practice you do, it will get easier with time. Let's do another problem. This one is very interesting problem. In this problem, what we have is a rocket. This rocket is going to go up here, so what is going to have is that initially it is going to launch from this point and then at some point of 40 meter mark the engine fails, the engine of the rocket fails, that is what the give one. But as it has some velocity already, velocity at 75 meter per second, it has some already a velocity, it is going to go up with that velocity. And then as engine fails, somewhere it is going to stop. So velocity will decrease, decrease, decrease as going to get upward against the gravity is going to stop. Vb will become 0 here. And then it is going to start coming down. So here in this problem, what it says that we want to calculate total height that is going to reach at this point and then at what velocity it is going to crash. We want to know that. So we want to calculate total height and we want to know how much, what is the velocity at point Vc. Now for this problem we are going to use this formula and then we are going to consider two journeys here. Journey from A to B and then 
journey from B to C. So, for A to B and B to C, first part A is my initial point, B is my final point, and then B is my initial point and C is my final point. So, A to B, B to C, and then I'm going to use this expression for two times. Now, what happens is that at this instant, velocity at B of this rocket becomes zero. It's going to go there, it's going to stop, and it's going to come back. So, velocity here becomes zero. So, if I apply this expression from A to B, I get VB square is equal to zero because velocity at the top becomes zero is equal to VA square, that's your initial velocity, which in this case is 75 meter per second at this point is equal to 2AC. Now here is important thing to understand is the origin is here downward. So for this problem, everything upward is positive. Everything downward is negative. This is important. So what's going to happen is that the gravity acting downward is negative. So this one, constant acceleration gravity is minus 9.81. So that's the acceleration, but it is downward, so it's going to be minus. So I'm going to put that minus. Distance SB, I have to calculate how high it's going to go SB. Minus SA. SA is the position from the origin, which is 40 meters. I'm going to put that there. So all I have to do is put the numbers in. VB is 0. VA is 75 minus 2 ac minus 2 9.81 sb i have to calculate minus 40 if i put the numbers in i should get the value for sb then once i have value for sb i am going to consider a journey from b to c so here b is becomes initial point c becomes final point so vc square that's my final velocity i want to calculate here is equal to vb square vb is zero i know that because it's top point zero is equal to 2ac and then you have distance here sc minus sb so sc distance is zero sb we have calculated here we can go put that value here and then we can calculate final velocity at which is going to crash so if you do this calculation this one is from the book if you do this calculation you will get sb as 327 meters so altogether it's going to reach height at 327 meters don't read the problems solve it on your own okay so 327 meters here and then it's going to reach here and then now i'm going to put that 327 here and then i'm going to calculate final velocity when it crash at point c so put the numbers in and then final velocity will get as minus 80.1 meter per second. Minus sign you will get because it's coming downward. So that's the arrow you will get downward direction, 80.1 meter per second downward. So that's the final velocity, that's what you get. So that's your rectilinear kinematics. Let's stop here and then let's continue this part in the next class or next video.